Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Start this lecture with a thought process by Johann Rockström. He says to reduce the risk of a global environment catastrophe and to avoid reversing the course of human progress, the world must urgently bend the curves of global emissions away from the fossil fuels. Now, this is a very great statement and uh, which really uh, we need to look at, but however, we need to also look at how to devise uh, the combustion system such that it will be uh, meeting our need while polluting the air the least. In the last lecture, we discussed about how to control the COx emission and also how to control the SOx emission level. Uh, in the combustion system. And today, we will be looking at very briefly NOx emission control and also the particulate uh, matter control. So, NOx emission control if you look at uh, is very important because of fact that it causes a lot of health issues as we had discussed particularly the pharynx and then nostrils and other parts get affected very easily. Nitrogen in atmosphere forms 8 different oxides during the combustion. However, we will be only considering 3 of them as they are important and those are nitric oxide, nitrous oxide and nitrogen dioxide. So, these 3 we will be considering and uh, is NO harmful to health than NO2? Uh, certainly no, rather NO2 that is nitrogen dioxide is more harmful as compared to the nitric oxide. By what reaction NO, NO2 are formed? Uh, N2 will be reacting with the oxygen that is available in air and uh, will be leading to the two moles of NO, uh, of course, that will be occurring at a high temperature and uh, two moles of NO can react with oxygen to form two NO2 that is nitrogen dioxide. And for any chemical reaction, the Gibbs free energy attains a minimum value for a particular temperature and pressure that we have already uh, dealt with. Uh, at length, just to again recapture the essence what we had learnt that is ln k p is equal to minus delta g t divided by r u t and k p is the equilibrium constant and delta g uh, naught is basically standard Gibbs free energy change that is occurred during the chemical reaction at equilibrium. And if you do this computation at different temperature, which is being shown here 300, 500, 1000, 1500, 2000 and 2500 Kelvin, you can see that NO uh, that is in ppm, ppm basically parts per million at 79 percentage of nitrogen and 21 percent of oxygen corresponding to air. And this is at 300 Kelvin. The, this is a very, very low value that is 3.1 10 power to minus 10. So, also the NO2 which is also uh, low, but little bit more than the NO. And as the temperature increases, this is NO values are increasing at uh, rapidly and a very higher value that 2500 is 24000 ppm. Of course, the NO2 also increasing trend that means, with temperature increase 
with temperature this NO2 increases with temperature and so also NO level. That means, it is basically dependent on temperature what it says from the equilibrium point of view and uh, therefore, one can get the clue that NOx emission can be reduced by decreasing the temperature. And particularly when we are using the air as a medium. So, NOx formations mechanism one can think of as Yeldovich mechanism and uh, there is another way of fuel mechanism and the Fenimore mechanism. The thermal NO is basically comes from the Yeldovich who has proposed that one and thermal NOx are formed by simple heating of oxygen and nitrogen as I had told uh, earlier and, uh, and so that uh, this is basically it is O plus N 2 going to the N O plus N and the radical N is being formed in this reaction can react with the oxygen to form N O. And these two reaction is basically given by in the uh, beginning or proposed by the Jeldovich. Therefore, this is known as Jeldovich mechanism. But later on people gave uh, another uh, reaction uh, which is added to the Jeldovich mechanism that is N is reacting with OH going to the NO plus H and this is three together is known as thermal mechanism. for NO formation and thermal NO contribution is uh, quite low till it attains the temperature of around 1300 Kelvin, but beyond which it increases rapidly that we will see uh, by looking at how it is. But before that, let us look at the prompt mechanism refers to the NOx formation, uh, which are formed very quickly by interaction of active hydrocarbon species, particularly derived from the fuel uh, with nitrogen and oxygen. So, uh, they are not generally observed in the flames of non hydrocarbon flames, but if the hydrocarbons are there then naturally the Fenimer or the prompt mechanism will be there. Uh, they cannot be formed by just heating the hydrogen with oxygen uh, that we had seen earlier and which is basically uh, different than Fenimer mechanism uh, and that is the uh, basically the thermal mechanism. During initial phase of combustion, the radicals with the carbon atom react with nitrogen to produce the N. As per the following reaction, let us say CH is a radical which will be reacting with nitrogen and uh, forming the SCN and again the radical N or the N atom. And this reaction is the main path which indicates the rate at which the radical N is formed. And the radical N can also be formed by the following reaction C will be reacting with N2, uh, getting into product of C N and N. And, uh, when equivalence ratio is less than 1.2, the SCN can be converted into as uh, per the following reactions. That is SCN is reacting with O getting into NCO plus N 
and there is another reaction NCO is reacting with H going to the NH plus CO. Keep in mind that during hydrocarbon reaction there will be several radicals like O and H and CH will be formed. As a result the NCO is reacting with H going in getting into the product of NH plus CO. Keep that all these reaction are both forward and backward depending on the temperature and pressure it will be uh, taking the different path. NH will be reacting with H getting into N plus hydrogen and N can be also reacting with OH radical getting into NO plus H. That means, any path it can take particularly when equivalence ratio is less than 1.2. So, in this case what we are seen, we are basically seen how this SCN will be converted into NO following this uh, step of reactions. So, NTO in intermediate uh, mechanism we can see that particularly when the fuel lean condition that phi is less than 0.8 at low temperature condition O will be uh, reacting the radical O will be reacting with nitrogen of course, uh, under third body M is the third body and which will be occurring at little bit higher pressure getting into the N 2 O and then M and this third body can be anything can be uh, nitrogen can be any other stable species which is not participating in the reaction. And H can be reacting with N 2 O again a third body. Uh, and getting into NO plus NH and O will be reacting with N2O into the NO plus NO. And keep in mind that this will be intermediate spaces which is uh, that means, both N2O is are formed depending on the situation and also the NO being formed uh, in the process. So, uh, the intermediate like means N 2 O is the uh, key for the formation of N O in this method. <coughs> so, if you look at the N O X emission particularly we are talking about N O now and uh, with the various temperature you can see that the uh, prompt N O is, is not changing with respect to temperature and it is having a very low values. Whereas, the fuel NO depending on of course, the condition whether it is a rich condition and also uh, whether it is a hydrocarbon fuel uh, or not because for hydrocarbon uh, fuel that uh, will be uh, very important one right. And uh, this will be having certain values whereas, the thermal NO remains almost constant till may be uh, 1250 you can say uh, and it picks up rather rather I would say that uh, till 1200 it remains constant and it picks slowly, but it becomes faster beyond the 1300. If you look at 1300 it really increases at a faster rate. So, therefore, the and which is a quite a huge value as compared to other one and uh, uh, in the radical N can react with oxygen to form NO and SCN that we had already seen in the uh, Fenimore method. Uh, <coughs> and the thermal NO contribution is low till the 1300 and beyond which it increases rapidly. Several techniques are being devised to control NOx uh, in the combustion and which will be discussing uh, them in a very brief manner rather very few method I will be discussing because of uh, due to the paucity of time. And uh, NOx control technology if look at can be broadly divided into two categories one is combustion modification other is post combustion controls. Post combustion control is a selective catalytic reduction because various catalysts being developed and used such that you can really control the NOx. And there is also selective non catalytic reduction and uh, in which 
the various uh, chemicals and uh, being used uh, such as urea or methanol can be injected to the product gases such that uh, you can reduce the NOx and so also the urea being used to reduce the NOx in the post combustion uh, uh, process. And beside this ammonia is also being injected uh, for certain uh, kind of combustion system to reduce the NOx emission before you really uh, let the flue gases to uh, enter into the atmosphere. And this we are not going to discuss the post combustion control methods rather we will be discussing combustion modification method uh, only two of them uh, will be discussing combustion modification method. So, if you look at the combustion modification method there are several methods which have been uh, really developed over the years and some of more are also uh, being developed. The if you look at uh, the one method is the low excess air method. Oh, one can really use it and which is uh, very easier to do that. Uh, and beside this the stage combustion method, stage combustion method can be divided into burners out of service and then uh, because some of the burners you may not use it, other is over fire the air and other is bias firing and uh, which we will be not discussing, but however, we will be discussing about uh, the low excess air method, we will be discussing about this. And there is a reburn method that means, once you burn it and then again you, uh, you can basically uh, burn uh, in such that, that uh, it will be NOx can be reduced. And there is another way of that you can design the burner such that the low NOx will be produced and again there we use the similar technique like that is the stage um, air one can think of and other is the stage fuel and there is a fiber burner which is coming up that can be operated at a low temperature. And uh, there is a, uh, also the uh, lot of interest to use the oxygen uh, combustion or such that you can reduce the NOx. One way is that you can enrich the air with the oxygen addition, lot of work is going on. Beside this another way is that which is being used for particularly big power plants and then engines also that is temperature reduction, because that is the crux of the NO form NOx formations that is the thermal NO um, uh, contributes more amount of NO as compared to the prompt or the uh, fuel NO. So, one way of is that reduce the air preheating, uh, which is being done uh, basically to enhance the combustion efficiency and also the reduce the CO emission level. Another way is that water injection, which can reduce the temperature uh, drastically and some people also use the uh, also the uh, alcohol injections so that you can add some fuel or the calorie value at the same time you will be using certain amount of energy for uh, vaporization of the alcohol. And there is another method which is being used nowadays very much and flue gas recirculation circulate the flue gas into the uh, combustion chamber so that uh, will be uh, NOx can be reduced. So, we will be basically discussing about the stage air and maybe some of the flue gas recirculation and some other method we will be discussing, not all the things uh, because of uh, paucity of time. Let us look at low excess air, boiler and furnaces as I told earlier are operated with excess air, because of fact that the fuel has to be burnt completely to have. Uh, the higher combustion e efficiency and low level of carbon monoxide. And uh, that is why a large amount of excess air than the stoichiometry is being used routinely. And of course, the advantages is that the combustion is operating with excess air always advantages, 
uh, certainly no because although the combustion efficiency in, in gets enhanced, but however it leads to a more NOx formation which is a nuisance so far air pollution is concerned. So, let us look at how this NOx formation is getting increased with the excess air. So, if it is excess air is uh, very less, so you can find that basically uh, the around NOx ppm 100, but it as the excess air increases with the maybe from something 1 or 2 percent to 25 percent, there is a uh, 5 times of the NOx formation. Uh, the 5 times increase in NOx uh, gases, NOx uh, uh, emission. So, therefore, it is a very important to reduce the uh, excess air consumption during the combustion. If you, you will use the less amount of excess air, then naturally what will happen? There will be drop in the combustion efficiency and uh, there will be also increase in CO level and however, NOx formation will be higher. But what we need that we will have to make a uh, concerted effort to optimize uh, the excess air such that we will have a reasonable amount of uh, CO formation uh, and also the reasonable combustion efficiency and with a reduction of NOx emission. So, that we will have to keep in mind. Let us look at stage combustion system and in the stage combustion as I told that in this case the fuel is being used and this is the air which is coming over in this case and mixing and this is the flame stabilizer which is used to recirculate create a recirculation zone such that um, the, it will stabilize the flame. And you can use the excess amount of air, but however, the air is known as this is known as primary air and uh, there is also a, another secondary air which is being injected in such a way that it can cool the flame and uh, some combustion can also take place because generally this can will be reach flame or reach condition fuel reach uh, flame will be there and there will be some carbon monoxide which will be there which needs to have secondary air. So, that combustion will be taking place in this case the carbon dioxide is being reduced at the same time the temperature will be low such that the NOx formation will be also uh, being reduced. So, this is most effective method to control NOx emission level because uh, as I told earlier the upstream burner operates in the fuel reach mode and, uh, and the downstream it operates on the fuel lean conditions and uh, uh, when the additional air is added to the downstream of burning fuel. Uh, and NOx emission can be reduced by 10 to 40 percentage. And uh, let us now look at uh, flame cooling and the thermal NO can be controlled by reducing the temperature of the gas which is being produced. How to achieve the temperature reduction is the question. So, this can be by reducing the preheating of air which is entering into the combustion chamber. The, let us look at like a, a combustion chamber in which the air is coming, this is your air and it can be generally being preheated to reduce the CO emission level and also the enhance the combustion efficiency. However, you can reduce uh, this uh, preheating air temperature. And the another way is the water or the steam being injected out uh, in this. Uh, in the combustor you will have to injecting water or the steam such that uh, that water will be evaporated and then that heat will be taken from the combustion uh, products such that the temperature will be lowered down and steam also will be reacting with the CO and will be converting into uh, the uh, basically carbon uh, dioxide. As a result you can reduce both the CO 
and the also the NOx emission level. There is another way is the EGR, the exhaust gas recirculation, which is uh, the product uh, may be containing the CO and other unburnt hydrocarbons and, uh, and which can be recirculated such so that when it will be recirculated and mixed with air and getting into again burnt and uh, such so that the CO will be converted into carbon uh, dioxide, unburnt uh, hydrocarbon can be converted into carbon dioxide. As a result, the combustion efficiency will be increasing and CO USC will be reducing and NOx is also getting reduced because of when you are adding that lot of some nitrogen gases will be passing through that and it will be lowering uh, the temperature because temperature is being lowered here. And this is a very effective method of uh, uh, reducing the NOx emission and enhancing the combustion efficiency while reducing the CO and USC. Therefore, it is being used profusely in practical combustion systems. And uh, these three methods reduce basically the peak temperature of the uh, combustion products and as a result the NOx being one. And uh, of course, some of this method may lead to the higher uh, emission level of CO one has to look at and people have found that 10 to 15 percent reduction in NO can be achieved by these methods. So, therefore, uh, these are being used in uh, particularly the exhaust gas recirculation method is used in practical application. So, now let us look at how the particulates are formed in the combustion system and uh, particulates are basically formed due to oxidation of inorganic material in the fuels besides the, the soot are being formed in the uh, hydrocarbon fuels and also the coal due to the fuel rich condition as we had discussed earlier. And uh, what are the sources of particulate matter? Basically coal biomass combustion result in particulate emissions like ash and other matter in organic materials convert into oxides. And uh, of course, even in gaseous fuel and liquid fuel you can get also the soot particulates which is uh, has to be avoided and combustion of low grade oil also generates particulate matters. And these particulates are generally less than 10 micron size, it can be uh, uh, having certain range and uh, these has to be also uh, removed. But question is how to remove this particle and matters, long bag house filters and electrostatic precipitator can be used or are being used rather to remove them in particular in power plants. And uh, in case of electrostatic precipitator, the first the charge of particles in the flue gas uh, being undertaken and then these charged particles are made to attach to the wall by passing through strong electric fields. And once it is these particulates are being attached, these are subsequently removed by shaking devices such that it can be collected and then uh, one can throw uh, remove that. And uh, beside the cyclone and hydrocyclone separators are also being used. Uh, to remove the particulates. Let us look at a typical cyclone separators here uh, in this gas in gas with the uh, particle or gas. The particle laden gas are being introduced here in this which is having a tangential component and this uh, moves around with a certain vertical force such that the centrifugal force will be putting and then particle will be moving towards that and it will stick to the uh, uh, to this wall because of this vortex which is being formed. Beside this once it will go then it will be coming over here and then again moves with a again smaller vortex and it will be passing through that. D during this smaller vortex the gravitational force which will be acting here and the particle also will be settled down. There are two ways it can be separated. One is that uh, it will go and stick to the 
wall of the surface which is uh, basically uh, due to the higher centrifugal force in the vortex and other one is due to gravity and uh, once this particle being there then you can really remove this particulate and the gas which is the particle free gases it can goes out the efficiency of this cyclone separator is uh, basically around something 95 to 98 percentage which is quite good and when the liquid is being used uh, that weight uh, or the hydrocyclone separator is being used. So, these are the ways by which we can really control the emission from the combustion system. There are several methods which you can also learn and uh, with this I am uh, coming to the end of this courses and uh, I have done lot of things in a brief manner just to expose you such that you can learn it better. And with this uh, I will uh, stop over you might have enjoyed this course and uh, for other things you can go for advanced books and advanced studies so that you can really develop a good knowledge about the combustion systems and uh, once you learn the fundamental of combustion well you can really design and develop the combustion system with the least amount of uh, emissions so that we can utilize the energy in an efficient manner and I hope that and wish that you people will be encouraged to uh, learn this subject well and also use in your professional life. Thank you very much.